Between the 5th of June 2021 and the 13th of January 2022, social networking platform Twitter was shut down in Nigeria in a row over Twitter's decision to delete a post by Nigeria's President Mohamed Wari. After seven months, Nigeria ended this ban with Twitter resolving to work with the federal government and the broader industry to develop a code of conduct in line with global best practices applicable in almost all developed countries. The National Information Technology Development Agency, NITDA, has now issued this new code of practice which covers all internet and social media platforms operating in the country. According to NITDA, the new code is designed to protect the fundamental human rights of Nigerians and non-Nigerians living in the country, as well as define guidelines for interacting on the digital ecosystem. Under the code of practice, internet platforms must provide a comprehensive compliance mechanism to avoid publication of prohibited contents and unethical behavior on their platform. The code also notes that internet platforms must promptly obey court orders directing it to provide information under its domain or any assistance to any authorized government. The new rule was developed by NITDA in collaboration with the Nigerian Communications Commission, NCC, and the National Broadcasting Commission, NBC, as well as inputs from Twitter, Facebook, WhatsApp, Instagram, Google, and TikTok. Civil society organizations and expert groups were also consulted. Violators of this regulation may be liable to disciplinary measures under the civil service rules, prosecution, and conviction under the NITDA Act 2007. Georgina Ndukwezaika, Arise News. We're joined now by ICT practitioner Sadiq Nasir for more. Thank you so much for joining us on the news tonight, um, Sadiq. I'm just going to ask, I'm just going to put it out there. Yes. How important really is this decision um, to the whole process? Why? Um, the important thing <coughs> to look at right now is um, this is not just a Nigerian conversation. Okay. It's a global phenomenon. If you look uh, a couple of years or I think a couple of months back during the era of uh, Donald Trump, uh, social media was used as a platform to actually cause riots in, in, in the US. And this is like un unheard of in, in an advanced world. And then coming to places like India, we've seen situations whereby fake news about child kidnapping was used to actually perpetrate the like um, jungle justice carried out on uh, innocent people that were just passing by simply because they probably saw the uh, evidence or something that seems like okay this is like a fake uh, sorry a kidnapping that is about to take place now bringing it back to the nigerian context um we've seen a lot of uh, issues whereby people are attacked on social media by other users that probably don't know them but mm -hmm. simply because you are behind a keyboard you feel like a, an actor that you can just attack someone because you don't know him with no feelings and mind you these people are actually human beings they are parents they are probably children mm -hmm. you know and it's not fair to attack them but shouldn't this then be uh, an issue between individuals individuals versus individuals and not the government stepping in yeah it's actually part of a broader conversation the okay. reason why i was trying to bring it like taking it from the u.s okay. bringing it to nigeria then uh, sorry bringing it to india then perhaps bringing it to nigeria mm -hmm. so that we can understand the context because the thing is um if you look at the um the discussion that is happening is the federal government sat down within its like other sister agencies and had honest conversations among them okay look how do we create this? Uh, how do we uh, regulate this space? What are the issues? And then they invited other civil society organizations, and then they came up with this draft policy document. Now, what the federal government is saying that, look, okay, Nigerians, this is a public document. What do you think? How does it affect you? As a father, how does it affect you? When you see your, uh, your child perhaps going to school and then his, um, his colleagues taking pictures of him, posing up on social media, making mockery out of him, even as adults, You'd be surprised that maybe uh, someone is sleeping in the train or sleeping in the car or sleeping in an office and then you take a picture of that person and then you put it up on social media and say sleeping on duty. I mean, it's fine and good, it's funny, but that person is a father, is a, probably a, a son. You, got, you understand the context I'm saying? So the thing is, now the government is saying, okay, look, let's discuss how do we, okay, some, for, uh, I'll give you a specific example. Okay, someone now is violated on social media. Okay, someone has his images spread across social media. How does he express his grievances? 
Okay, so now what the government is is trying to mandate the social media platform is okay. Look, someone should be able to report that. Okay, look, my social media account is stolen. My social media, uh, sorry, my pictures are being used illegally without my permission on social media. And then, of course, right now we are leading up to the elections. And then with election comes a lot of uh, sentiments, co comes a lot of vices. And a lot of people um, use these platforms, social media platforms, to perhaps sell their candidates while dissing another candidate. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the, the conversation is not like, okay, don't, um, don't diss another person, but the conversation is, let's have this conversation within a civic, within um, respecting each other's right, respecting each other's religion. So the case being, if anyone goes against this rule, so anyone gets involved in bullying, or what we, like you said, what we might yes. call fun yes. um, yeah. at the moment, the government steps in to prosecute, or is it a case of making it easier to trace such accounts? Which is it? What, what, what from, from the policy document I've read is, uh, the government is, uh, trying to mandate the social media platforms, make it easy mm -hmm. for users to know their rights, create social, uh, create awareness around fake news. How do we address fake news? Someone is being violated on social media. How does he address it? And these are some of the requirements. They said make it easy to report. And one of the uh, things they mandated was look, uh, all these big social media platforms, which are mostly ba based in Silicon Valley, should have a presence in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that presence is so that they can have a country representative. And when we have issues like this, issues like uh, religion, people use religion for political whatever or, or ethnic centric, mm -hmm. we can have that broader conversation that look, okay, there's a new emerging threat and it's affecting our culture. You don't see this as government's ploy to control No, it's not an a, attempt media. to control. It's just an that's why if, if it was controlled, they would have just smashed out the laws and then take it out. But they're you saying, know, no, okay. let's have a conversation. That's why they brought out this document. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a positive thing. Rather than the government, I mean, we're in a democratic setting. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's good to have that two-way conversation. Yeah, uh, uh, some would say the timing may be poor. Uh, I mean, you've spoken about how we're going into an electoral season. The electoral yes. process has begun, yes. and we have a government in power. Some may be reading minutes into it. But my question to you is, uh, countering misinformation with legislation and policy, some analysts will say, could also be used to gag the press. It may be a ploy to censor the press. So how do we ensure mm. that we are regulating and countering what you call fake news? Who defines fake news is another issue. How do we regulate that without undermining the social media impacts in strengthening accountability and inclusion without gagging the press? Well, um, like I've mentioned earlier, this is a public document. So the press and every other stakeholder, political parties, uh, different interest groups can now actually make input into this document. Mm. If the press feel they are being violated by any way, they can make a submission to Nida and say, look, we feel this policy does not accommodate our like freedom of expression, freedom of our professional conduct. And these are the things that you need to do to actually mitigate that. And it's like I said, it's, it's, an, it's a global conversation. And we can't, just, um, we can't just sit back and watch social media annihilate our social right. morals, our values. Another thing to look at within that social media context, nobody's talking about it. There's what, what they call bots. Bots are actually automated codes, like codes that some, mm -hmm. someone sat down to, to develop. Yeah. And the aim of these bots are to perhaps make clicking easier for, for mm -hmm. you, maybe automated clicking for a business, and you want to know, okay, what are the general sentiments? Yeah. And then on the flip side, we have bots that are used for evil purpose. Yeah. Now the discussion is, someone that is in Silicon oh, Valley. There's always a positive and a negative yeah. slide to it. Yes. So unfortunately, we have to end the conversation thank there. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much thank uh, you so uh, for, joining for joining us on the news tonight. ICT engineer expert, uh, Kabir, speaking to us there.